had, Katie Couric approached me and said they were going to do a documentary on guns. And, and she wanted to get, make sure she got both sides. So, okay. Now, we don't turn those things down. I did this for 60 minutes. People were wincing, going, oh, boy, oh, this could be terrible. It turned out great. That's still on our website. Uh, the 60 Minutes interview was fantastic. I was shocked at some of the stuff they kept in there. But again, I worked with them. You know, we, we worked in some, some kind of uh, our adversarial mode. You know, they needed something to help them. But when we did this with Katie, and we had, I spent two hours with her, and she didn't use any of it. I, and, but what I did is I taped the whole thing. She didn't know if I had a recorder on it. Virginia, we're in one part of the state. As long as one person is part of the conversation knows it's being picked, that's all you need. So, um, Don't try that in Maryland. Okay. I, I was recording it, and, um, well, I guess I could have told her, right, in Maryland. You have to get consent. Okay, so you get consent, but I was recording it. And um, so I had all that. Well, when, then she, she didn't use any of that, so they ended up calling a group of members. I think she was hoping to get something she could use. She couldn't, I guess she could get anything from me that she could twist and use easily. So um, she got, uh, we got a group of people together, and then they all did a round table answering her questions. And that was recorded, and she didn't know that. Um, and um, at one point, she was said, well, if, if we don't do you know, background checks, how do we keep guns from the hands of felons and terrorists? And our, the members of the table immediately responded, the round table immediately responded. Uh, there were like five minutes of interaction there explaining, well, you know, the, uh, you know, things like uh, background checks don't stop anybody. But all these people like Cho and everybody else, the guy that showed up at Virginia Tech, they all passed their background checks. It's, not, it's nothing, it doesn't work. And so we had this back and forth. And at the very end of this hour or two hour interview of the group, she had everybody sit dead still. And she says, okay, now we need to record the background noise in the room, which is, this part is actually, this is actually true, I think this can be done this way. They record the background noise with nobody talking, nobody saying anything for like 30 seconds. And then they stop, and then they can go in and filter that noise out and get a really, really quiet interview by canceling out the background noise based on that. But, it turned out they used that footage. Now imagine this. Imagine if all of a sudden I just showed up and I said, nobody in this room make a noise. Well, I'm going to do it. See what happens. I know what will happen. You know, people will start looking away. They'll look down. They'll look at the ceiling. Because generally, if we're not talking to each other, we don't stare. If I just stop talking and start staring at you, you get really uncomfortable fast, right? <laughs> Well, that's exactly what happened. People, you know, were sitting there and they're looking down. Well, what she did was, in the film, she asked the question, what would we do with felons uh, if we don't do background checks? And then she cut to that part of the film. So everybody's sitting there looking down, looking like, well, we, you know, we don't have an answer to that. So when we realized what happened, we sued her. So uh, the lawsuit uh, is, is still, it's a judge just set it aside a few days ago, but we can, we can, we're looking it's at appealing it. It's a defamation suit? It's a defamation, basically, yeah. Because she, always, she admitted she did it. She's not even contesting the facts. But anyhow, uh, so we're, I think that will be continuing.